everybody welcome to a brand new episode of hand that rock uh, as you guys know that we interview a lot of moms and today we have a special mother us because we are is a six month old boy the uh, let's uh, see what she has to share about her pregnancy so my pregnancy in the first trimester was pretty smooth because i never had any nausea i never had you know vomiting and all of that which is a very common symptom you know a lot of women go through it uh, so that was ab- absolutely fine but then uh, starting from my uh, second trimester it, it became a little difficult because i also have this autoimmune condition so you know um, i was uh, diagnosed with um, a few other uh, uh, problems complications in my pregnancy so after that i had to go for a scan for a weekly scan so it was like a weekly scan um, uh my uh, they would check whether everything is okay with my fetus or not right so i would have to go through weekly echo and you know it 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 actually takes a toll on you when you know you have to go through that scan every week because like every sunday you're like okay today i'm going to get tested and you know they're trying to figure out if everything is okay with the baby or not so i think um one thing that really helped me during that is having a positive outlook uh because you know uh, i'm not a very optimistic person to be you know to be very frank uh i have this tendency where i always think that the worst is going to happen to me right <laughs> so uh, i think in that situation you know having positive friends around having friends who have a positive outlook help me a lot uh having family members around who would kind of keep assuring you that you know nothing bad is going to happen you just need to um uh, you know think positive you just need to be positive about it um that helped me a lot and uh, finally everything was fine then during my third trimester i was diagnosed with uh, cholestasis okay so cholestasis okay. comes with a lot of symptoms like you know uh, itching your whole body itches and uh, you lose appetite you just don't feel like eating anything you always feel full um, you feel bloated all the time right so um, that's a very difficult stage because uh, your third trimester is when you really need to start eating you know because your baby uh, grows the most during that mm-hmm. time and at that point of time i was diagnosed with cholestasis but then i took proper medication and then you know uh, i couldn't eat a lot of things i just had to move to things like you know khichdi and uh, uh, dalia so that was my basic uh, food i i couldn't eat citrus fruits i couldn't eat a lot of other things you know which people usually eat you know uh, i couldn't eat fat which people eat during their last trimester so that was that affected the weight of my baby a little bit um, but towards the end with proper medication i was able to deliver uh, a 2.4 kg baby which was not not so low i mean it was it was fine compared to the kind of complications i had so i think um, it's very difficult to come up with a manual you know that you know this is the manual and this is the rule book which every pregnant woman needs to follow right. because to each their own you know you go through different complications uh, some pregnancies are really smooth people yeah. you know don't really go to the doctor other than their regular checkups but mine was different i has to frequent i had to frequent the you know, doctor's clinic like every week because i had to go through these scans yeah. uh, but i think the i would just repeat that uh, that you know having a preg- uh, pos- a positive mindset and having positive people around helped me a lot yeah. um, i have a yeah. friend who's almost like family and uh, she she knows me you know she knows me in and out so she kind of uh, really uh, made it her, a point that she would uh, you know uh, keep me positive during that time so that is one thing and i think that helped me a lot yeah so what symptoms were you having like you said it was there and bloating was there so yeah. it was there it was there i was not able to eat anything i would always feel full you know uh, even though i had i had had my last meal like 4 hours ago i would still feel that the food is still stuck in my throat so if you have that feeling you basically can't eat right um i started having sleepless nights because i would get this reflux uh, the moment i would try to sleep so i would just roam around here and there i would walk to and fro in my room i wouldn't be able to sleep uh so then you know they gave me this uh, medicine uh, i think um, you know that's a very common medicine for liver problems okay. uh, and it is a very common issue you know in pregnancy a lot of people have this you know cholestasis uh for my itching also you know you cannot really sleep if your entire body is itching that's also a very difficult thing yeah. so i think uh, i used to use lactocalamine uh, that, that helped me a lot i remember you know finishing bottles and bottles of lactocalamine in my pregnancy because i would just smear my body with lactocalamine yeah. uh, at least like three or four times a day so i worked you know as long as i could so 
if you are at, at your workplace and you are having so many symptoms your body is itching that's all that's also very difficult oh, right yes. Uh, so I think that kind of helped me because you know when you have a distraction, uh, if you have to go for a class, if you have to prepare your class, you cannot always think about your your physical state, right? Yes. You know if 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 body is aching or if you're feeling itchy. So I think that also helped me. Um, so I uh, I went on leave from 19th of December and I delivered my baby on 21st of December. So you know, uh, yeah, because yeah, because my baby was like one month premature. So uh, I was supposed to deliver him on like January twenty twenty first, but I delivered him on you know, one one month before that because uh, my doctor said that you know uh, because of my cholestasis, uh, the baby was now in standing in harm's way because mm-hmm. you know if they said that we would prolong your pregnancy, uh, we might affect the baby. So we did not want that. So as soon as I completed my 36 weeks, uh, uh, you know, my doctor just suggested me a date and I got operated and we, you know, uh, I delivered my baby like that. So I did not get a chance to go through, you know, uh, I couldn't get a chance to think about normal delivery because my my condition just did not allow me uh, to think about that. My doctor had completely, you know, uh, she just uh, assured me that for you, C-section is the best option and we cannot even think about normal delivery. Right. So that yeah. was Case, yeah. yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, whatever way the baby comes out, it's fine. It's a ball for me after all. So, uh, yeah. so it's a one month premature baby. Um, what was that like? Uh, you know, uh, did you did he have to stay in the ICU or anything like that? No, thankfully, um, he uh, you know the doctors uh, made you know made sure that everything was fine. I also had to take a few steroids. Uh, before my, you know, before delivering him, because they said that uh, if you deliver a baby early, the lung function is not really mature. So they wanted the lungs to be mature enough. So I had to take like four doses of steroids. Um, and uh, after that, I think you know, yeah, uh, the baby was kept in the NICU for like six hours mm-hmm. just to go through the regular checkups, and then he was thankfully he was fine. So there was no need to keep him in the NICU further. Mm-hmm. And I was delivered, I was discharged from the hospital on the third day. So, oh. yeah, there were no, thankfully, there were no further complications. Everything was fine with him. So, great. Uh, very, very helpful, like very inspiring to your this Ria, because obviously, you know, like um, very few babies are born on their due date. Like if you look at research, it says that it's uh, less than 45% babies are actually born on their due date. Majority come right. before. So, uh, yeah, right. Preemie moms, I mean, uh, you know, obviously it's such a, you know, like it, it's it's something, right? It's an experience to have a baby which comes so much before your baby. But it's great yeah. to hear a story like this, you know, which gives so much of hope. So um, we are like after the C-section, like uh, can you tell us like how was, how was it after the C-section? Uh, my recovery was, uh, I would say, uh, not very difficult. Because, you know, uh, I had planned for it well in advance. So, you see, I knew I will not have, uh, I knew that I will not have a lot of help from my family. Okay. Because at that point of time, my parents were not well. Uh, my mother was unwell uh, and she does not stay in the same uh, state. My father was unwell. Hmm. Actually, he was going through a few surgeries himself. So I knew that they wouldn't be able to come at that point of time. Mm. And uh, I also knew that my father-in-law also would not be able to come. So basically, mm. I knew that I would not have a lot of assistance for my family. Mm. So what I did was I had, uh, you know, uh, I had fixed a Japa. If you, you know, if you must have heard of Japa maids. Uh, and I booked her in advance. Uh, but then what happened, you know, that you also have to give a date to them. That from when, you know, uh, do you want them to start their work? So I had called her, I think, uh, from um, from 14th or, you know, from, from 14th of January because I never thought that, you know, I, my pregnancy would be just, I would be able to deliver on December itself. So, uh, so uh, I couldn't call her before that because she was engaged somewhere else. So somehow, uh, thankfully, uh, my Marcy, she was able to come uh, here for like 20 days. Um, and uh, she was there with us. She was the only person who was there with us. Uh, and uh, I was there and my husband was there. So I think we managed, just the three of us, we somehow managed the baby. And then after that, my Masi went and thankfully before she went, the Japa maid came. Oh. And, you know, she was, re- I think I, I'm really blessed to have that. And uh, some of my friends recommended her to us. And, you know, she really took care of everything after that. 
she took care of what i have to eat she took care of the you know she would massage the baby she would do my massages in a c section delivery you cannot really uh, you know have a massage as soon as you deliver it so you have to like wait for like 20 25 days and then you can start with the light massage so she did my massages she she took care of the baby and uh, uh, so i my job was just to feed the baby mm. apart from that she would do everything she did the rest of it so i really got time to you know rest and recuperate so i think that was a very uh, good part because if i had uh, relied on my family i would have i think you know i would be in a very bad situation yeah. uh, and because i knew that i wouldn't be getting a lot of support from my family due to the circumstances i think it was a good decision to uh, hire a japa maid for that period so yeah. she was there with us for initially for 45 days but then i want wanted you know i i requested her and then she stayed us with her with us for like two months okay. so i think in the two month time uh, i was you know uh, i became fully functional and i was able to take care of everything else so it gave me a lot of time to you know uh, heal uh, basically yeah right. okay got it so like you also mentioned yeah. that you were working right or uh, till till like two days before you delivered So did you go back to work like did you have a maternity break or something yeah i got a 6 month maternity yeah. leave uh so that maternity leave ended on 19th of june so yeah. i had to join on 19th of june uh, but then this is a vacation period summer vacation period for universities and colleges so i went to my work i went to work for like 3 days and then i applied for a month of summer vacation so i i still have one more month um maybe after that i will try to apply for child care uh, leave uh, you know there is a provision of child care leave because my boy is still just 6 months old it's difficult to you know kind of leave him right now because we have to start him on solids and there are so many things to be yeah. done uh, there is nobody else basically you know my parents are here but they're not in a great shape to you know help me a lot Mm. uh so because they have their own challenges they're not you know they health they have their health concerns mm. so um i think i'll try to get uh, you know a few more months maybe uh, and then i'll go go back to work yeah yeah so like super interesting uh, you know point that you mentioned that uh, your maternity leave has just ended i really want to know from you uh, and i'm sure a lot of working moms want to know uh, what are your plans like have you planned the next 6 months like child care i am hoping i will get at least two more months so one month of summer vacation and two mm. more months of child care leave that's what i'm planning um at least two more months you know uh, and uh, i have also hired a 24/7 help um and i'm kind of starting to train her now mm. um there is you know there is one benefit uh, of working in academia is that Uh, you know with special permission uh, if i do not have classes i can come back home mm. and you know see my child for like half an hour feed him and then go back right mm. and uh, i am also blessed that you know i stay on the campus itself so my office is like 5 minutes away from here wow. so i i can take my classes i can come back feed my child and go back again so i think that's a very big plus point with me after you know such a struggle and a hard pregnancy uh, what is your emotion after you became a mom it's actually you know uh, i just realized one thing now that uh, a lot of people used to tell me initially that you know you wouldn't understand the feeling of a parent unless you become one right uh, and now i think that's a very true uh, statement you cannot understand what it is to be a parent why a parent worries so much unless you become one right yeah. so now uh, yeah. you know i feel that it's a very you know it's it's like a roller coaster ride you know you have so many different emotions and at one point of time you know you feel that your baby is only safe with you right uh, it's really difficult you know to let other people hold your baby to let you know your relatives or uh, your friends hold you because you like you know especially when the baby is you know too young you feel like oh my god you know uh, you uh, uh i just you know felt that this is my baby is only safe in my hands yes. right so slowly you have to learn to let go and you know you have to kind of start believing that no other people can also take care of your baby because otherwise you know you're mentally so overpowered and it's, it's very overwhelming you know always worrying about your baby and i am i am a very paranoid mom you know i'm a very paranoid person so if you know my baby starts to cough or you know if uh, he's he has a, he has a fever 
uh, I'm, you know, I'm all over the place, you know. So it's actually very difficult being a mom. Uh, not just the physical aspect of what you do is very challenging, but also the emotional aspect, you know, always worried about the well-being of your baby. Uh, so I think, yeah, I'm just experiencing all these emotions for the first time. And um, at times it becomes really overwhelming. Uh, so you kind of need somebody to tell you that, you know, it's okay and, you know, uh, things will settle after a certain point of time, yeah. uh, which has started to for me now, you know, I'm I'm now okay with my baby in other people's arms. Uh, earlier, I was not. So, yeah, I think I'm gradually learning to let go. And uh, even if my baby cries for some time, I, you know, I have started to assure myself that it's okay. Your baby cannot always smile, you know, he will cry at one point of time and it's okay to you know um to let him cry for some time so i think yeah it's i think it's a learning experience and uh you know as a first time mother i'm also learning a lot of new things yeah and i think it's the same for all mothers you are never prepared for this role it happens for the first time and you just experience a range of emotions which you have never experienced before yeah yeah, yeah so, true. so true. so like um if if you have to give any advices to moms who are thinking of having a baby, okay, or if you are, or, if, or like moms who are pregnant right now. One thing I'll say, as I already mentioned earlier, that having a positive outlook is very important because, you know, even if there is a complication in your pregnancy and if you keep thinking about it, it is only going to make things worse. Yeah. If you just keep thinking about negative things, I think your health is going to be affected negatively. It's not going to help you. So I think having a positive mindset is very important. Having positive people around you is also very important. And also, you know, uh, 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 having a, a, a plan uh, after, you know, you have the baby in your hands. That's also very important. What help will you be getting from your family? Because uh, you definitely as a mother, you know, you will not be in a shape to do everything on your own. Whether you have a, a normal delivery or you have a C-section delivery, you need time to recuperate, to heal from that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so I think having a plan in advance uh, as to who will be taking care of your baby and how will you have some time to heal uh, yourself mentally and physically, uh, that is also very important and that helps a lot. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think these two are the major takeaways that I would uh, like to uh, talk about. Yeah. yeah. You have to be prepared much in advance because, you know, after the baby comes, there is no time to do all that part. So, you know, having a plan for your, the, the financial aspect is also very important. Right. Um, raising a child, uh, you know, going through that process of hospitalization, all of that is very, very expensive. And so, you know, yeah. making sure that, you know, that you have a proper insurance or how you are going to fund those expenses. Uh, once the baby is there, you have to buy millions of things, you know. Uh, these days you have to buy so many things for the baby and all of that costs a lot. So I think um, having a ready plan as to how you'll be dealing with the finances because it's going to increase many fold after you have a baby. That's okay. also very important. Right. And even Japa meals are quite expensive, right? I mean, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, they're very expensive. Yeah. Uh, I paid, so for two months, I paid her like 60,000. Yeah. Uh, so she's like 1000 per day and uh, I paid her 60,000 and you, then you also have to pay for her commute Correct. so if you're calling her from somewhere uh, far you have to pay for her commute as well so yeah. that is included and of course if she's staying with you you have to take care of other things you know how where will she stay the kind of food that you'll eat who will cook the food and all of that so yeah so it's a very expensive process it is it is just the, the good part is that they are already trained in all of this baby care and mother care postpartum so you know that's why a lot of people prefer to have a japa made uh, with them but yes the financial aspect is very important like you know nobody uh, like tells you about this but it is super important to be financially prepared get your insurance right. you know and check if you're planning a baby because it's better that your insurance covers all of that and post baby, right. in case you're not having support, you will need to hire you know, help in the house, either a cook for a 24 hour or a half day maid, whatever works for your family. Thank you so much for coming today and sharing your amazing journey with us. I'm sure Thank that you so much for having me on the platform. Thank you. Thank you, Mara. Thank you so much. Thank you.